Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, worshippers of all ages, welcome back to YouTube. My name is C Raptor, and today we're bringing you a battle report fresh from my German destroyer regrind for research points here with Tier 7's Lebrecht Maas. I, I have almost always had a tremendously low opinion of this ship, but if you've been hanging out with me on Twitch or, or watching some of the little Twitch clips that I've been posting over the last week or so, a little maybe maybe a little more than a week, you you may have caught that I've kind of reevaluated my opinion of this ship just a little bit, and we're going to talk about that over the course of this match. Spawning up here on the north side of Trap. We've got quite a bit of uh, a quite a bit of German presence here. I'm backed up immediately at close range by a Gneisenau and a, Gra a couple of Gneisenaus and a Graf Spee. Of course, I'm in a German destroyer, and so we're chatting a little bit about wow, quite the German contingent up here on this end of the map. Now, ordinarily in a carrier game, I would not have gone to the south of this island. I wouldn't want to risk my my get a potential exposure. But for whatever reason, I remember looking at this, thinking, you know. No, let's do this. I decided I decided intentionally. I made a conscious decision to be more aggressive early with this ship than I ordinarily would with with a destroyer with questionable AA, let's say, in a carrier game like this. You can see the enemy ranger, he's got a, ra uh, a rocket squadron up already out looking for me. Does does stumble into me here. But because I had my AA off, there's not much he can do with that information by the time he manages to actually find out where I am. He has to back off far a bit just in order to be able to line a run up but by turning my AA off again he loses track of me once again by the time he picks me up he's really not able to get a, a run in and, and get rockets on playing games with your your anti-aircraft guns on off on off is one of the the best ways you can really mess around with an enemy with enemy rocket runs it's not foolproof. It's it's absolutely not foolproof, but it does give you a lot more of a chance than uh, a lot of players understand or acknowledge. Whenever I run into destroyer players in a carrier game who have to just leave their AA on, I just shake my head because it it means that you don't really understand the value of of being detected and understand when to turn your AA off. Now I've got quite a bit of help up here. Of course, my German contingent is up here backing me up, but. One of the things you're going to see me do over the next few minutes is I get a little overly aggressive. This is intentional. I'm making I'm making a conscious decision here to aggressively push up. I want early torps on this Bismarck. But you can see behind me, I, this is what I didn't catch at the time. The Gneisenaus, the Graf Spee, pretty much none of those guys have shots into this cap circle right now. And one of the enemy destroyers has just popped up and is using my own detection against me because... One of the big problems, let's say, the, the, the drawbacks of playing Moss, she is spotted from orbit. For a Tier 7 destroyer, the, the lowest that you can get this ship detection-wise is 6.8 kilometers. That's horrid. It's absolutely horrid. And so learning to play around it, learning to deal with it and, and manage it and make it work, is one of the real challenges of Leberecht Moss. And it's, I won't say it's unique to the German destroyer line, because that's that's an exaggeration. But it is a common theme, let's say, you're going to find with some of these German destroyers. They have a lot of health, but in quite a number of cases, they have questionable detection, and you're going to have to figure that out. Now, I put my Hydra up. Again, I'm screening for these guys behind me. We do find the Akatsuki's torpedoes. So I'm going to swing a little wide of those. Manage a couple of good hits here on the Bismarck with my own salvo. And now that my Hydro is up, I make the decision, alright, I've got all these ships. I've got a Gneisenau, a Spey, all these guys over here on this 5-6 line in between the B and the C cap. I'm going to push the hell out of this Akatsuki with my Hydro. Unfortunately for me, <laughs> the fun police show up. That's right, the Ranger brings his rocket back, rockets back, and now my cover is blown. The Akatsuki is up here sitting in his smoke. Now he knows I'm right here, and does something that most Japanese destroyer captains you run into won't do, and that is make use of his really, really good guns. Look at that hit I just took. 3k there, a fire, knocks out my engine. I have to repair because Japanese destroyer guns are really good if you know when to use them at the right time. But now that I've flushed him out of his smoke, things are going to get a lot dicier for both of us. We're both hard lit now, well inside each other's detection range. The Ranger does manage to get off one really good rocket salvo there. As my help finally arrives, I've got a Schoolers in the cap with me now, backed up by a North Carolina, a Flint, a Colorado, God and everybody. My entire team is at this cap, and yet, somehow, the Schoolers, Mofton there, you see him behind me that's just wrecking me, is alive! All of these battleships, 
And this squishy Scourge is still alive. <laughs> he's kicking my ass, of course. Because he's a light cruiser and that's what he's supposed to do. I'm trying to play little throttle games here. And finally on this... No, not this salvo. One of these next couple of salvos, it finally works. I finally managed to get flipped here and start reversing. And right there. Here it is. Everybody overshoots me. Finally. As I go dark because the Akats is back off the board. And so there you go. In less than five minutes, about five-ish minutes of combat, I've given up 90-some-odd percent of my HP. We still don't own this cap. <laughs> and I'm I'm on the verge of death. And, and ironically, that's where it's going to stay for the rest of the match. I switched to the AP here thinking I might be able to get a couple of, couple of shots into the scores before he goes. Doesn't happen. And uh, I smoke up here, not wanting to get spotted by him. That hood back on the 10 line, taking some pot shots, but thankfully coming up empty. So in just a few minutes of frenetic combat here, we've only managed 30,000 damage in a cap. We've got a decent amount of spotting damage there, you see. 45,000, that's pretty, that's pretty impressive for such a short time in the match, but... We have a narrow lead, but we've given up control of most of the board. Because literally, if you look at the minimap, my entire team, with the exception of the carrier and that Vesteris down on the two line, is all in the C cap. Whenever I see this happen in random battles, it always it always makes me angry. I'm just like, oh, why did you do this? However, in trap, right, the caps are fairly close together. We have the opportunity. If we're smart, if we move as if we move as a group now to turn to kind of wheel and push into the center of the board from the C cap and make this and make this happen and get some board control back. Now, that's not my plan because if you look at the minimap, you can see there's a Helena in the middle of that cap. There's no way that I'm going to go into that cap with a Helena. Not on 1600 HP. That is not happening. However, there are a bunch of battleships back on the tin line that are now pretty well cut off from any realistic support for their team. They have no way to spot me, aside from carrier planes. And they are basically, I mean, look at the board, look at the map. Their t only tactical option is to just start running south because my entire team is here. These guys are going to get pummeled the whole way. So my thinking is, all right, my job, I'm going to slide. I'm going to push south as quickly as I can. I'm slide over about the, the eight line. I'm already on the eight line. Maybe kind of edge over to the nine line. My torpedo range is eight and a half kilometers. I want to get out in front of these guys as best I can and put torpedoes in their in their path of retreat to make them turn, take damage, flood, whatever I can get, because my team, we need to get these guys off the board while we kind of make this this wheel around and and try to try to get into the into the center. So that's where my head's at right now. I'm already in torpedo range of this hood. I know the hood is pretty quick. I also know that he's probably gonna maintain an angle. So I'm kind of waiting here. I've, I'm gonna get around this island, and then I'm probably I'm just gonna go ahead and dump these torpedoes into his uh, into his path. Now, something else that you have to remember, and we talked about this earlier about Moss. She's got eight and a half kilometer torpedoes, but six point eight kilometer detection. So there's not exactly a ton of of stealth torpedo window here to play with. Ranger wanders back over with some torpedo bombers as I peel back towards this friendly flint. I don't want to get caught by the fun police where some of these guys can shoot me. And sure enough, you see there, the Bismarck secondaries come in, even though I was spotted for maybe no more than about five seconds. So clearly, he still has his secondaries targeted on me. Our Flint behind me is doing a great job of burning down this Helena in the B cap. That's, to right now, that sounds really, like a really, really good option. Unfortunately, that Helena is kind of fading in and out of existence. He does the Flint, of course, is in smoke, so he doesn't always have vision. He's reliant on the carrier planes or someone like myself to potentially get eyes on this Helena. But even I don't have eyes on him right now because of the island. Ranger has figured out where I am. He wants to bring his rockets back. I'm not. I can't afford this, so I immediately blow a smoke, turn on the A, try to drive these planes away, and succeed in that much at least. He decides to take the rockets somewhere else. But if you look at the minimap, again, I caught something I wasn't expecting. The Ranger is just to the south of me, and he's he's fairly exposed. Now, I don't know where he is right now, but what I'm trying to do at this moment is I'm getting my guns turned. My goal is to get in this little gap and spot this Helena for the Flint, because the carrier's struggling with it at the moment. The Flint does manage to get a couple of salvos off as, oh, look, there's the Ranger. My torpedoes are ready. Well, hell yeah, I know what I'm doing here. Now... I expect, my expectation is this ranger know, will see that he's that he's spotted and turn to the south. So what I did there intentionally, if you if you looked at the reticle, I intentionally led those torpedoes 
I overled them, right? You look at the the, the the shaded areas tells me, hey, this is where you want to lead them. And I and I moved that to the right. I overled those torpedoes intentionally, right? Thinking he's got to turn south. I want to lead these more. But this ranger is apparently oblivious. Not only does he never touch his rudder, now that I'm hard lit on the surface, he never seems to get another rack of planes off the deck before he eats two torpedoes. I'm putting AP into him. And, uh, AP, you know, I'm on, like, maximum adrenaline rush here because I'm getting, like, three-second reloads on this low HP. And, um, yeah. Bye. That's, that was, that was, that was the most shocking moment of the game for me. Not that we spotted the Ranger. Rangers are spotted from orbit. That happens all the time. But the fact that he never once, re never once really touched his rudder after he was spotted. So, now, we have a bit of a breather, right? Let's, let's take stock of things. We have a, a six-ship lead. We have a massive lead in firepower. We're up about 300 points. We still don't own the B-cap, Right? And I can't go in there against a Bismarck, right? He's got Hydro, not with my detection and everything. There's no way, not on 1600 HP. So, again, my plan to get into this cap has basically been thwarted. I decide I'm going to turn out and run down about the 7 line and, and just spot for these guys, maybe get some torpedoes into that Nagato if I need to, but he's looking a little rough. You can see there the health bar on the right. He's down to about maybe 15% of his health. I suspect my team's going to finish him off before long. So... I kind of reorient myself here thinking, all right, well, let me try for torpedoes on this Bismarck. Bismarck looks like he's trying to leave the cap circle. So let's make the assumption then that he's going to he's gonna come out of this cap. So I'm going to speculatively throw a rack of torpedoes out here. I have no idea where this Bismarck is. I have no idea what to expect out of these. But you see there, with the adrenaline rush, my torpedoes reload about every 70 seconds. So ah, I'm willing to take the risk. And of course, we do manage to pick him up there, leaving the cap and uh, as he, as he kind of angles to the south. But you see there, he's always right on the edge of my detection. My detection is about 6-7 or 6-8, 7-1. I've got to maintain this spacing, or his secondaries have the very real possibility of wiping me off the board. Over the next few minutes, what you'll see is me basically stalking this guy and playing detection, detection games, intentionally trying to hold this spacing as best that I can. It also puts me in the unenviable position of being in what I call a stern chase, all right? This is this is something that I find a lot of Destroyer players, and one of the reasons I'm making this video, a lot of Destroyer players either don't understand, never learn, don't appreciate, I, I don't know what the deal is exactly. But from where I am right now, okay, this Bismarck is just inside my, my effective torpedo range, eight and a half kilometers. The problem is the angle I have on him because I'm chasing him from a stern in order to, and he's sailing away from me, in order to catch him, my torpedoes would have to travel probably 10 kilometers to get to him because he's constantly moving away, right? So there's almost no scenario under which my torpedoes are going to be effective. And that's one of the things that I see. I see a lot of new destroyer players make this mistake, right? They, especially with shorter range torpedoes. When you when you play in high tier, you know, if you're playing a, a gearing with the, the 16 kilometer torpedoes or a Holland or a Shimakaze, nah, you know, you've got crazy range on those torpedoes. This, some of the, what I'm talking about here doesn't apply, but for most destroyers, right, that have around 10-ish maximum range, 10-ish uh, kilometers in terms of maximum range, once you're in this position, you're chasing a ship from seven, eight kilometers astern, the odds of you landing torpedoes is just terrible. Now, I'm taking the shots because he could slow down, he could change course, he could decide he wants to turn around and just and just face tank these guys. I don't know, but you see there, my torpedo's losing steam and running out about, about a half a kilometer from his hull. Now, I'm keeping him lit, at least. This Bismarck cannot, cannot go dark, he can't get away. The team always knows where he is. But again, look at the score. With a six-ship lead, we're still not in the B-cap. And... And we're, I mean, well, I won't say we're on the verge of losing, because that's not the case. Now with the seven ship lead. But it is frustrating that, you know, here we are this late in the game, the enemy's down to its last three ships, and finally this Gneisenau is driving into the B cap to start kind of making that happen. Seven ship lead now. So this is essentially cleanup, right? I mean, I, this, this Bismarck's going to die. Um, we're going to cap B, and there's going to be very, very little left in this game, right? This is... From, from a damage perspective, this my, my game is largely over, right? I wanted to I wanted to, to talk about a couple of things 
um, in this in this in this game and kind of just talk about German destroyers in general. I open up here at the end because I just don't care if he kills me. I figure we've won this game, and I just I'm looking for chip more chip damage. Um, first off, I was I was hyper aggressive early, and I got away with it. I probably shouldn't have, right? I mean, the, the enemy scores, to his credit, did a really, really good job of trying to make sure that I didn't get away with it, but I managed to. Um, that is one thing that I feel like a lot of German destroyer players, and one of the more underrated qualities of the German destroyers in general, don't appreciate, is your the size of your health pool. With the hydro and the size and the amount of HP these destroyers have, they can bully other destroyers in select situations. The trick is, over-aggression is not necessarily always the right way to go, right? So, you see there, it worked out for me in this game, but I don't know that that was the smartest play I've ever made. <laughs> Sometimes, fate protects fools, children, and ships named Labyrinth Moss, as it did in this game, or at least it seems to. Um, the other thing is, I wanted to make sure that we talked about uh, positioning and the stern chase and the torpedo thing, because I see a lot of destroyer players making this mistake. Once you are a stern of a ship that is running away, you might as well save your torpedoes. Like, there's a, as I mentioned, there are examples in the high tiers where that, you can, that's not necessarily the case, right? But in general, it's a waste of your time to fire torpedoes when you're, when you're completely astern of someone who's running away. It's just, you're not going to get anything out of them. So, um, just keep that in mind, right? Always be trying to put yourself in a position where uh, the enemy ship is pushing into you or you're able to get an angle as he turns or something like this because you're just really... Really not going to get anything from a stern. Friendly Flint here and I are having a bit of a conversation towards the end. And right here as the game ends, he'll have a, he'll have a quick line. He was super glad that I was out there doing some spotting for him. And as a destroyer player, that's always nice to see. Always nice to hear, right? Because spotting, in my opinion, is something that's very underrated and under-rewarded in World of Warships. And I'm not talking about XP. Well, I'm not only talking about XP. Because I feel like... Uh, spotting is, let's say, not as rewarded as it should be for destroyers, Wargaming would disagree with me. And that's fine. We, we wouldn't see eye to eye on that. However, I do feel like we need more uh, medals, uh, ribbons, something in this game. I feel, like, I feel like destroyer players need that tangible feedback uh, of, good job, you spotted 50,000 damage, you spotted 100,000 damage, whatever. And when I have a destroyer game like this one, where I spot almost 100,000 damage, I'm pretty proud of that, like, because that's not normal. Usually it's 30 to 40, you know, so when you get that much of that, it always, it always, it always feels really good to me. Anyway, guys, Leberek Moss has really been uh, a surprising joy to regrind. I've, I've badmouthed this ship for years, and between the HE buffs and some additional experience in understanding how to play this ship in this line, I've found that she's really not nearly as bad as I remembered. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed that one. Be safe out there, wash your hands, and I'll catch you next time.